Hello, hello. Thank you for coming over to the open studio tonight, Sean. Uh, this is Charles, as you know. I've got my open studio happening during the Brick Bottoms and I'm duplicating my open studio door by running this Zoom for six hours, 12 to six. And you came by, yay, thank you. Well, how would I ever miss it? I mean, I feel like I've been a regular at your open studios before. So uh, it's nice to be here um, virtually at Brick Bottom. Well, and haven't, I mean, haven't we actually talked many times as you know, the whole Brick Bottom open studio energy gets going, you get talking about all the ideas and we've talked about you being involved. Like, oh, I'm gonna show a film here or, oh, we're gonna do, yeah. So, I mean, most definitely, you know, the, the energy of the, the sort of the building kind of does really kind of inform that open, the open studios sort of vibe and brings out all those kind of creative juices, gets them all juicier. So, <laughs> so and I did, um, you know, with your last name being Cotter and the word brick, I knew that that would sort of be sort of like a draw in because for the first time now you are part of the open studios. Well, well, thank you. I mean, uh, I mean, <laughs> Cotter, Cotter really doesn't have it, I, but I'm, I'm the son of a, of a contractor and we had plenty of bricks growing up. So bricks feature prominently in my upbringing. Um, <laughs> I know how to throw a brick really well too. So, well, and again, um, so it's May 1st. I know one, please introduce yourself and then we can, oh, we can uh, hash, we, we'll hash it up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hi everyone, I'm Sean Cotter. I am the executive director for Wicked Queer, Boston's LGBTQ plus film festival. I'm also a filmmaker and an artist myself. Um, and I am also a longtime supporter of Brick Bottoms Open Studios, yeah. uh, both as an artist and as a patron. So nice to be here again. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's, it's May 1st, so it's yeah. also, you know, uh, two weeks, three weeks ago, I'm thinking about Maypoles and the idea of like weaving together community. But today I was like, workers unite. And um, so I was psyched that you were gonna be part of a little conversation, a recorded conversation. Uh, I mean, spring has sprung. So, I mean, I'm also thinking about Maypoles um, <laughs> and also working it out. <laughs> um, so you know, I mean, like the, I feel like, you know, the best thing that would ever come out of a May Day and workers, if we actually federally just were like, hey, I'm just going to raise the workers' wages. I mean, $15 is not enough, but I mean, it's a start to where it is. Well, think about the free labor. You just closed the Wicked Queer Film Festival 2021. You want to tell yep. people about it for a sec? Sure. Uh, let me talk about the film festival. So uh, Wicked Queer, uh, for those who don't know, is uh, the fourth oldest um, LGBTQ plus film festival in North America. And we are an all volunteer organization. So we are all working really hard to bring uh, queer content uh, to you. And now it's actually in your living room, which is kind of great, or your bedroom. Let us in, let us in, let us in if you want. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know, we, um, uh, we, our mission is to support filmmakers, to support artists, um, and also to make sure that stories are being told of, uh, voices in the community and the LGBT, especially the LGBTQ plus community that are not being heard, um, normally by, you know, the mainstream or even the multiplex or sometimes even the art cinema. Um, we do support and promote uh, really independent voices. Um, and I think it's an important um, thing that needs to happen. And we also kind of talk a little bit about histories as well. So, which is something of a personal fascination um, because I feel like histories are often erased um, and retold and also reformed. Um, and who knows what the truth is, but at the same time, there are facts that happened and there are histories that aren't being told to the mainstream. I mean, I never learned anything about queer history growing up. <laughs> I didn't even learn anything about black history or native history or, you know, AAPI so history. That you've done right there because this is what the conversation has been about all day. 
which has been it's great. National AAPI Heritage Month. <laughs> well, but it as is as well. <laughs> right. It is just a, a persistent vision on the kind of uh, civic participation you need. Um, nothing like having fascism centered to make you start thinking about, you know what, the <laughs> I'm going to be an anti-racist and I'm going to want to make I'm all just really, that. I mean, honestly, I'm just really glad that America is starting to wake up because I feel like I've been fighting this fight since I was a teen and became sort of politically aware and knew that I was the other. Um, and that's the thing is like, it, yes, it, you know, I fight this fight because I am an other and I'm perceived as an other in society. And I feel like I don't want other, other people who are also othered by this sort of white cisgender heterosexual uh, patriarchy that we are living in disguised as a democracy. I want it to be really, I love America and I want it to be democratic. I want everybody to have a voice. I want all, everybody at the table. I, and I want us all to tip the table and break it into pieces and then build a motherfucking new table. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the perfect May Day guest to wrap up my open studio. <laughs> now, it's actually, it's been pretty fun. I mean, you're uh, agreed to, uh, you know, do the recording and it's fun to have you hang out for a little bit. And certainly you promote Wicked Queer. Wicked Queer ran all April. All I mean, April. Literally April. Just, <laughs> and again, a, a, a thing that was always fun and physical where you would, you know, you'd work with theaters. Some filmmakers could come in. And a reminder that all of this work that you guys do to put on these programs is volunteer. Mm -hmm. We do, I mean, we do because the love of it. That have employees. Right. You guys are all volunteer. And when the artists come in and all of that physical nature had to make a huge pivot uh, because uh, what were you doing? And uh, I think we were in a meeting March 7, 2020 where we were just hearing that venues were closing. So Wicked Queers had to make a huge pivot to the online. Yeah, I mean, you know, we were, yeah, we were, <laughs> um, the day that we were supposed to announce our 2020 program was the day that we heard that two of our venues, the Museum of Fine Arts and the Bridal Theater in Harvard Square were shuttering. And then the next day we heard that our third venue, Arts Emerson was shuttering. We also had lined up for our opening night a fourth venue, which was Arclight Cinemas, which oh, also right. and are now gone, which is such a sad thing. That's right. For, At for the Boston, big North Station, the brand new North Station, right. And the thing that was great about Arclight is that it had a theater size that doesn't exist in Boston. So it's serving a market for right. films. Like not every film is gonna sh is gonna sell out uh, 300 seats. Well, and I mean, right now, the, the, right, the de-densification space is so important. And right, the, do films that don't bring in the numbers, well, that's not actually how real estate works. No, no, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's not how we work either. It's like, I'm not, I'm not interested in sort of like, I mean, yes. It was it, like, like a, a smaller independent. There, there were a small chain based out of LA um, and they were art house cinemas and they were, I think they had, I think Boston was his seventh location, I think. Yeah, I remember, uh, I think it was gonna be, even though it was gonna be kind of a pain in the neck to kind of connect with something that was fairly corporate the way it had moved across, I thought it would be totally fun because the space, the space you know, was what they cool. built over at the North Station in Boston uh, is just so big. Um, I just thought it'd be fun. And I, I mean, it could also fits in our mission because we have, we were showing at the Brattle, we were showing at Arts Emerson, we were showing at the museum, that fourth um, point on the corner, like making it a perfect uh, rectangle of queer propaganda <laughs> in Boston was so appealing. <laughs> oh, well, oh, well, but now, Sean, where's Wicked Queer now? Um, so we just wrapped up our festival. So we're sort of, <laughs> um, you know, um, really excited about the program this year. We showed 168 films um, and we had, oh my goodness, probably close to 110 filmmakers attend, um, which is kind of nice. Um, that's the one sort of so thing like about the- different. 
Yeah, so it's, I mean, that's the one thing about the virtual festival that's kind of nice is that um, it allows filmmakers to um, kind of come in and be part of the festival, I mean, which right. I mean, Wicked Queer traditionally cannot, we can't afford to pay. You can't do that, yeah. If, if you can show international. It. Yeah, we'll show you a good time though. Yeah, I mean, if they come, we're gonna we're gonna show them a good time. And I, the one sad thing is, like, I met so many great filmmakers that I was like, I want to be having a beer with you, or you know, smoking a bowl, or like having a glass of wine, or something, and and chit chatting about film with it because yeah. it was really great. I mean, and we had some really amazing artists that came um, came and well, were part of, well, of the festival. Part of the reason I'm doing this event is to get an idea of the comfort level with this video chatting. Because, uh, you know, I have done work for Wicked Queer, uh, mostly in the physical, but in the virtual this year, I became, I had the opportunity actually to see films and help curate a program, which was exciting. And then I got to do a couple of Q and A's. And I really felt like I connected with the people that I had the opportunity to talk to. And I enjoyed that. Well, that's really, I mean, that's really why I create that. I mean, that's really it is that, that sort of you have to you have to kind of like make space for those kind of things to happen. And that was one of the things that since we since we pivoted last year and couldn't do our physical festival, we had a virtual our first virtual edition for 2020 because I had 150 films. That oh, that's right, because you, you went right into June. We, uh, we did the end of July. So it was the last week of July, first week of August, we did a 10 day fe virtual festival, which was good. I don't really I remember a lot. summer, but I do remember the festival. So that was good. Yeah, I mean, we learned a lot of, um, of things throwing that festival. And it was interesting. We learned a lot this time as well about what it is. And, and I feel like a virtual platform is always going to be a part of a film festival going forward, because I think it's a, it's a good resource to actually get filmmakers shown and to have those stories being told and brought to you because more eyes can actually see it. Well, um, and this is, you know, because I agree with you. And I think, you know, it's, it's been super interesting as we uh, sort of plan the, the concepts behind open studios and what that means and there's a gallery on site here which is open um, i haven't been downstairs all day i'll be very excited to hear about the report um and there's an uh, i think an easy like uh, I'm, I'm i'm done with zoom you know i'm just done and i get it i i have the privilege of being employed but i am sitting in front of this zoom all the time yeah, I, I hear you. It's that intentional step to have these kinds of conversations and, and or maybe two more because they fit on my screen. Um, but I think uh, they can work. I mean, I, I think like, honestly, that the, what's really great about this is that there are platforms as well that you can kind of think about, like, is there a virtual gallery component to the open studios? There is. is. There's several. <laughs> that's great. I mean, I think that's really great. And I think that like we did this year, we did this really great um, kind of event space because one of the things about a physical festival that we couldn't really replicate last year that was solely missed is sort of a place for um, the filmmakers to gather and network. Um, and I think that, oh, right. the networking of, of artists is like, is one of the, it's like, it's it should happen like and that's one of the wonderful things about when filmmakers attend is we can kind of hook people up and you know that again like going to open studio those creative juices get juicier <laughs> when people come together um, thank you for keeping juicy. saturday evening juicy keeping it juicy <laughs> um so we we did these spaces on a platform called gather um which looks like um i call it zelda meets zoom so i described um, it zelda and, uh, so zelda and, and zelda in a way that looks like an 8-bit video game for those who don't know <laughs> what zelda is um, and uh zoom obviously is this so it has a video conferencing kind of like aspect to it but it was really great because we built were a like a three room sort of event space that had like a bar we had a cake bar since there wasn't a lot of fake liquor but people could you know you know, BYOB. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, uh, and I and I got used to it. it uh, I described it as um, Zoom and Cartoon Land, which would be your eight-bit animation uh, reference. Which yeah. I have no idea what Zelda is, but that idea of you, you know, the cartoon takes you into these areas, and then it's a breakout room. Right. 
And yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, so we had like space, we had a couple spaces. So we did a, uh, for the first one, we did a sort of a preview party and we had like a room that had trail, the trailers for all the features on a loop. And so people could go in and they would hit an, um, like an object, they would walk up to an object, it would glow and they could click on it and then it would pop up and you could watch. Um, well, I did, the, I did it a couple of times, right? So, I mean, Sort of directing people, there was a place where you could see all the previews, which are were great. And then there was another place where yeah, there, where there's like a there was a virtual dance floor. We had a rooftop dance disco. Yeah, I was there. I was there. Was kind of amazing. I mean, it was well, it, it it was it was interesting. It was interesting. And I know I, that Somerville <laughs> opens. Yes, I know. I loved it. <laughs> I know you did. I know you did. Although I will say, the people that I met, uh, they were small, but you could have these little Zoom conversations as the cartoons came closer together. And that was interesting. Yeah, so uh, when you, it, was like, it was like actually being at a party because it worked that way. So as you walked up to the other person's avatar, your video chat popped open and then you could have a conversation with as many people, you could whisper. Right, and it could be know. as difficult to get out of a conversation that you don't want to be in anymore I, like, as... <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, my internet or, is going out. Or you could just walk away and just be like, oh, away. shoot, I'm sorry, I lost you. <laughs> now, I was curious because so Somerville Open Studios went with Topia. Okay. And I, it was last night. I heard about it too late. There's too many other moving parts. Uh, but I'm, I'd be super curious to know what it was like. My is favorite it was, tonight as well? I don't know. Go on the Somerville, have to go on the Somerville Open Studios website. But I think it was Friday night to kick it off because Saturday night everyone's tired. They have to go home and eat real food. And I don't know. I don't know. Amateurs. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. No, but be curious. Uh, party every night. <laughs> I liked how they described it, or I heard the pitch for uh, this uh, platform was that it was designed by the guys by Birmingham. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, oh. And like, <laughs> Grandpa was on the beach when the first tree was lit a fire. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I've never been to it when it was the desert. <laughs> but I've been. <laughs> um, no, I've never actually never been. So. <laughs> um, burning. Well, up. I just wanted to, you know, I'm glad you came over, looked at my pictures and uh we'll see if they'll actually take these recordings and load them up to <laughs> the the youtube i know that there's a lot of uh talk about um art yeah i mean it, i i, I just love i love you i love seeing your work charles i mean it's really kind of amazing like <laughs> it was good it was fun to show you i'll have to do that do that in the next recording I know. But this is really and it's got my it get get those juices flowing right now and i'm like oh that's right it's just back I'm to the juice I'm juicy. <laughs> i should expect nothing else <laughs> oh <laughs> so i'm going to turn off the recording thanks well, for being wickedly queer thank you and if, on open studios and if people even um we have a we have two films that are happening this weekend just oh really we're, just because we're maximum oh, there's two. i'm gonna try to get these up pitch pitch, pitch. um yes uh so uh art Summerson, which is one of our venue partners is screening two films one is called ma Belle, my beauty which is hot off of sundance and south by southwest um and has having its new england premiere so check it out it is a gorgeous little south of france polyamorous jaunt uh, um with all that mean with all that sort of implies okay um and the other one is a amazing dark comedy um about punching nazis oh really <laughs> but it's also like bringing your girlfriend home to your parents um all wrapped up into one little what's that movie called? called it's called nimby which is not in my backyard <laughs> okay okay um, so um Art Jefferson for the uh, uh yeah, so if you want tickets, uh go to wickedqueer.org. Um and people click, to on the link, click, on, click on the links and they will zap you to Art Emerson. Easiest e way to do it. Easy peasy. <laughs> and if you want to actually if you want to volunteer, if you're, <laughs> if you're so inclined, um, we are an all-volunteer organization, get involved or support I with some dollars. Switching, 
There it is. Get it involved with some dollars. <laughs> you know, make it rain. It's is it Sunday yet? Yeah. Um, yep, wickedqueer.org. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much for just being part of this little experiment. Really um, but I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to support. And um, way to go, Brick Bottom. Congratulations on all the videos. <laughs> yeah, this all rolls out. <laughs>